Welcome back, forensic students. We are moving right along in our intro to forensics unit. We've already discussed observation skills and deductive reasoning. And in both of those lessons, I mentioned eyewitnesses. So today we're going to focus in on eyewitness accounts. But before we start, you need to know that there is a lot of controversy surrounding the use of eyewitness accounts as a form of evidence. And what I mean by that is... Um, eyewitnesses seeing something, stating that they know something, and then that being the only form of evidence presented in the courtroom to jurors. Um, so that is highly frowned upon. We'll talk about that later in this lesson. Um, and uh, it's no longer used. It used to be, but it is no longer used as a the only method, the only evidence that can be used to convict someone of a crime. Um, so I wanted to just start by saying that this is a highly controversial topic. So before we jump in too deep into eyewitness accounts, you need to know what an eyewitness is. So an eyewitness is a person who has seen something or uh, someone related to a crime, and they can communicate those observations. Eyewitness accounts of crime scene events vary considerably from one person to another, and what we observe depends on several factors. So our level of interest, are we interested, are we not? prior knowledge, biases, and emotions. So there has been tons of research that supports that the things that we observe are highly dependent on whether we're interested or not, uh, what sort of prior knowledge we have about the situation, what sort of biases um, or unconscious biases even we have, and then what's our emotion? What is our current uh, state of mind at the event that's taking place? Did you know that eyewitness misidentification is the single greatest cause of wrongful convictions nationwide? But still, the criminal justice system profoundly relies on eyewitness identification and testimony for investigating and even prosecuting crimes. So the big question in all the things we're going to do in this lesson, I want you to keep coming back to this question. Do you believe that eyewitness accounts are reliable form of evidence? And furthermore, should it be used solely as the only piece of evidence that can convict someone of a crime? All right, if you are in my class, we are going to pause the lesson at this point, and we are going to do some research. So earlier I said this is a highly controversial topic. We are going to talk about how the science does or does not support the use of eyewitness testimony in forensics cases. We're going to look specifically at some cases. And so I want you to pause the video now, and I want you to complete the eyewitness testimony web quest assignment. And then when you're equipped with a bunch of knowledge, I want you to come back and finish the video. Now, I'm assuming if you have made it this far in the video that you have completed the eyewitness testimony web quest assignment. Uh, and what you learned through that web quest is all the reasons why we say that this topic is so highly debatable. Though the topic is controversial, most states have accepted eyewitness accounts as a flawed science, which is a good thing. Uh, but investigators can still use eyewitness accounts to produce what's called leads. Uh, and this can help them gain additional evidence that then can be used to convict a suspect. So while we can't use eyewitness accounts on their own, we can use the information that eyewitnesses provide us to get leads. Those leads often lead to more additional evidence. And then that evidence can be brought into the courtroom and then can be used to convict someone of a crime. Additionally, the testimony of an eyewitness can be very powerful in persuading the jury one way or another. So eyewitness testimony is when an eyewitness who's seen something or someone or knows something of, in regards to a crime, uh, when an eyewitness testifies in court about that crime. Jurors rank eyewitness testimony as one of the most influential pieces of evidence that sway them to a conviction. And I want to know, do you find this alarming? So once again, jurors rank eyewitness testimony. So when somebody stands before the jury in a courtroom and testifies to what they know, jurors say that this is 
the most influential piece of evidence that sways them to a conviction. Not blood spatter, not DNA analysis, not fingerprinting, eyewitness testimonies. So people are likely to view the same scene in different ways, depending on many factors. We looked into this in that WebQuest assignment. People's memory can also be influenced, molded, and manipulated. And one of the uh, coolest things to watch is called the bunny effect. So if you have some time, I highly recommend you pause this video, hop on over to YouTube and type in the bunny effect. Watch that video because it sort of ties in all the things we've talked about with the things that we learned about in the web quest. All right, investigators will often enlist the help of a forensic sketch artist. And forensic sketch artists work with police to interview victims or witnesses of crimes so that they can recreate a semi-realistic drawing that hopefully reflects the image of the perpetrator to the best of the witness's memory. Now, forensic sketch artists should be able to create these drawings from only a description, which is probably easier said than done, and must be able to extrapolate from what is given. Now, the difficulty in the art of forensic sketching is that much of it does rely on the witness. Uh, and remember, witnesses are often distraught. They um, are, their emotions are a mess when they are trying to work with the forensic sketch artist. And so this is often dis difficult for the sketch artist to accurately depict what the person um, looked like. In addition, witness testimony is notoriously unreliable um, as memory in stressful situations is not very accurate. And we're going to expand upon that um, after the lesson. Witnesses may believe that they saw things that they did not or some similar situation which can lead to sketches that do not accurately reflect the perpetrator perpetrator. And unfortunately, this happens a lot in forensics. We are actually going to, in the next lesson, talk about something called the Innocence Project, where we will see several situations where this was true. So an eyewitness worked with a sketch artist. Um, through their descriptions, they generated a a composite sketch. That sketch got put out on the news. It led to an arrest. It led to a conviction. And then later through DNA testing, we find out that we got the wrong person. Um, and that happens more often than not. But you'll have to tune in to the next lesson where we talk about the Innocence Project to learn more about that.